Oh no, not this again. Why are there so many bees? Why are there so many bees? God, I miss that logo. It's the first bit of MCU content we've gotten in well over a calendar year, and as much as I'd love to spend a full minute rejoicing over that fact, I should probably cut to the chase. This video will not contain spoilers for the first two episodes of WandaVision, and the reason for that is that I'm quite literally reviewing two episodes of a sitcom, and the only things there really are for me to spoil are basically gags. Now that's a bit of an exaggeration, and that's likely to change as we get more episodes, but for now, this is going to be more of a broad impression of the show's first foot forward. And man, this is a good first impression. To open with the opening, after The Mandalorian I honestly wasn't sure whether this show would have a title sequence, but to see that it looks like we'll be having a different intro every episode is such a great choice. These intros clue you into the show's already admitted inspirations, that being The Dick Van Dyke Show and Bewitched, and yeah, two solid episodes of exactly what that sounds like is exactly what we have here. And it's the commitment to the act that makes these two episodes remarkable. The humor works! It would be so easy to not have confidence in the older style of gags and delivery, to delve into outright parody, but as someone who tends to enjoy old sitcoms on their own terms when I watch them, WandaVision earns points in my book for just embracing the earnest goofiness and wringing genuine laughs out of it. Not all the jokes are knockouts, but it's enough that I don't remotely mind how little plot progression there is in these two episodes. In fact, it's kind of refreshing to see a modern homage to the 50s, 60s black and white suburbia aesthetic that doesn't hinge itself on portraying a sinister farce of some kind. Like, I love Pleasantville and Reefer Madness as much as the next guy, and we've all figured since this show was announced that things will eventually fall apart, but what I'm loving so far is that this has its creepy foreboding elements, but doesn't leave you wanting a quote-unquote real show with this premise because it already is that show. For at least these two episodes, barring the occasional intrusion by some sinister foreshadowing and intentional vagueness in the world building, the only bits of the show that feel like they're approaching sarcasm or irony are the interludes where we see an in-universe advertisement which doubles down on some unfortunately period-appropriate sexism. That aside, this really does feel like a show from that era that happens to be about a witch and a robot moving into the suburbs. It's earnest, not satirical, and Wanda and Vision walk the thin line between still feeling like themselves while also being quintessential period archetypes. It's so fun seeing Paul Bettany stretch his broad comedy chops again. I already really loved his performance as Vision in the movies, but he's allowed to have so much more energy here. Episode 2 basically involves him doing a big drunken stand-up routine, and it's, well... Yeah! Give me real Jeffrey Chaucer vibes. Elizabeth Olsen gets to play just as broad and be just as funny, but she also really grasps the concise, sporadic beats of pathos. I imagine she, in particular, will have a buffet to sink her teeth into once things go south. Part and parcel with the show's earnest commitment to its chosen genre is how we're two episodes in and there hasn't been so much as a hint toward action. I've always said the real test of how confident one is in their comic-based property is if they're willing to have an installment which de-emphasizes the whiz-bang fight scenes. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the whiz-bang, and the genre shouldn't be without it. I look forward to eventually seeing Wanda and Viz cut loose on somebody by the end of this show, but seeing these two superheroes get to just be domestic, use their extraordinary powers in incredibly ordinary circumstances, and not feel railroaded by an external villain plot is the kind of thing this whole genre could use more of. Even without the goofy, jokey filter, the lack of any fight to be had or any doomsday to stop makes the whole dynamic feel really down-to-earth, warm, and human. I like how the brief glimpses we do get of the more sinister undertones to what's going on are all punctuated by a sudden shift to more modern camera moves. There's something so utterly eerie about remaining steadfast in the single-camera sitcom practice until the show wants you to question what's happening, at which point we'll get a dramatic zoom or a dolly shot. The score also reflects this. The chintzy tunes played throughout the body of the episode are right on the mark, while the modern score used for the credits is sufficiently harrowing. The job of these first two episodes is to make you curious as to what in blue blazes is going on, and boy is that accomplished. I look forward to seeing how the stylistic changes influence future episodes, and also hopefully being able to talk in more detail about story and character as things get deeper. 
If you'd like to join me for the ride, like and subscribe for more videos like this as new episodes come out, and leave your own thoughts on the premiere in the comments so we can have a back and forth discussion. Until next time, I'll see you in the future.